Hi all, this is basically a discussion on second semester complementary mathematics students uh, based on the, uh, well, it's actually on second module. Let us see how we find the area of an unbounded region using a limiting process. For that we have first we will discuss this example in the relay to be in the, uh, one, uh, 1 by x raised to power dx as b goes to infinity. You will see what happens to that. It is pretty simple that integral a to b x, uh, 1 by x raised to power dx is nothing but 1 minus 1 by b cube by 3. Now as b becomes larger and larger, we know that 1 by b cube becomes smaller and smaller. So that limit b tends to infinity, 1 by b cube will be equal to 0. Therefore, we see that this integral is always less than 1 by b. So we, we have b tends to infinity, integral a to b 1 by x raised to 4 dx is 1 by 3. Okay, so this is which gives us a broad idea that this example we say that uh, the area of the unbounded region consisting of points x, y such that 1 less than or equal to x and 0 less than y less than 1 by x raised to 4 is nothing but 3. Now, let a be a fixed point. And suppose f is integrable on the closed interval a b for every b greater than a. And also, assume that the limit b tends to infinity integral a to b f of x b x exists. Then, if if it exists, then we say that the improper integral integral a to b f of x b x is, and we define its value like this: integral a to infinity f of x b x is equal to limit b tends to infinity integral a to b f of x b x. Okay. Similarly, you fix a b. And if it is said to be integral on closed interval a b for every a less than b, we define integral minus infinity to b f of x dx is equal to limit a tends to minus infinity integral a to b f of x dx provided a limit exists. Now, we say that if we suppose f is integral on closed interval a b for every a less than b, then we define integral minus infinity to infinity f of x dx is equal to integral minus infinity to 0 f of x dx plus integral 0 to infinity f of x dx. If the improper integral so on the right hand side are both convergent, convergent. If then only we can do like this. If, if an improper integral is not convergent, we say that it is divergent. Now assume that we have, assume, assume that f and g are continuous functions such that <coughs> modulus of f of x is less than or equal to g of x, it is greater than here. No, it, it should be less than or equal to g of x for all x greater than or equal to a and assume that integral a to b f of x dx and integral a to b g of x dx exists for every b greater than a then first case if integral a to infinity g of x is g of x d of x dx is convergent so it is integral a to infinity f of x dx and if integral a to infinity f of x dx is divergent so it is integral a to infinity g of x dx remember that the case one there is a typo error here this modulus of f of x should be less than or equal to g of x. Okay, we will continue. Similar manner, we can discuss the convergence of, of for the intervals of the type integral minus infinity to b f of x dx and integral minus infinity to infinity f of x dx. We will try to see the example. We wanted to prove integral a to b uh, dx by square root of 1 plus x raised to 8 is convergent by comparison with 1 by x raised to 4. There is a two dx are there. This is again a tipo error. We know that 1 by square root of 1 plus x raised to 8 is less than 1 by square root of x raised to 8. That is equal to 1 by x raised to 4. Now, just now we have studied 1 by x raised to 4 is unbounded near 0. That means as x approaches to 0, the value of 1 by x raised to 4 ultimately becomes larger and larger. So, since that is unbounded near 0, we cannot use integral 0 to infinity dx by x raised to 4. So what we do is we break the original in, uh, integral in two parts. That is integral 0 to infinity is in dx by square root of 1 plus x raised to 8 is integral 0 to 1, 1 by uh, dx by square root of 1 plus x raised to 8 plus integral 1 to infinity dx by uh, square root of 1 plus x raised to 8. Now you see this uh, first integral which I my, my mouse, uh, mouse cursor works is continuous because 1 by square root of 1 plus x raised to 8 is continuous in the closed interval 0, 1. And the second integral is convergent by the comparison by taking g of x equal to 1 by x raised to 4 and f of x equal to 
1 by square root of 1 plus x raised to. Therefore, it can relate to be dx by square root of 1 plus x raised to 8 is convert. Again, there is a repo error. There are two dx, only single one d. Let us see how will we discuss the integrals of unbound. Suppose that the graph of f has x0 equal to b as a vertical asymptote. That means it is a tangent at infinity which is parallel to uh, y axis. And that for a fixed a for a being fixed, f is integral built on the closed interval a q for all q in, in left closed right open a b. If the limit in that limit q tends to be minus integral a to q f of x dx exists, we share we say we shall say that the improper integral integral a to be f of x dx is convergent. And we define integral a to b f of x dx is equal to limit q tends to b minus integral a to q f of x dx. I hope you got it. Similarly, if x is equal to a is a vertical asymptote, we define integral a to b f of x dx is equal to limit p tends to a plus integral a to b f of x dx provided the limit x. Let us see for which values of r is integral 0 to 1 x raised to r dx is compound. If r is greater than or equal to 0, then x raised to r is continuous on closed interval 0, 1 and the integral exists in the ordinary set. If r less than 0, we have limit x tends to 0 plus x raised to r is equal to minus infinity. So we must take a limit. Okay. So r less than uh, 0. Uh, we have limit p tends to 0 plus integral p to 1 x raised to r dx is equal to limit p tends to 0 plus x raised to r plus 1 by r plus 1 at 1 p that is 1 by r plus 1 in, into 1 minus limit p tends to 0 plus p raised to r plus 1 provided r not p equal to minus 1. So if r, is, r plus 1 is greater than 0 that is r is greater than minus 1 you have limit p tends to 0 plus p raised to r plus 1 equal to 0. So the inter integral is convergent and equals 1 by 1 r plus 1. That is for r less than minus 1, limit p tends to 0 plus p raised to r plus 1 equal to infinity. So the integral is divergent. And if r plus 1 equal to 0, we have limit p tends to 0 plus integral p to 1 x raised to r equal to limit p tends to 0 plus 0 to 0 minus log p which is infinite. So integral uh, 0 to 1 x raised to r uh, dx converges only for r greater than minus 1. We will define a sequence. A sequence a1, a2, a3, etc. an approaches L as, as a limit if an gets close to and remain arbitrarily close to L as n becomes larger. What do you mean by close to? That means the distance between an and L becomes lesser and lesser as n becomes larger and larger. If this is in this case, we write limit n tends to infinity L, an is equal to L. Now, let us see the definition of limits of powers. Limit n tends to infinity, r raised to n is, is infinity if r is greater than 1, equal to 1 if r equal to 1, 0 if 0 lies between, uh, r lies between 0 and 1, both uh, including 0. Not both, but in except including 0. Here also we will use the comparison test. If limit n tends to infinity a n equal to 0 and mode b n is less than mode a n, then limit n tends to infinity en is equal to 0. Okay. Newton's method, there is a typo error there. To find the root of the equation f of x equal to 0, where f is a differentiable function such that f dash is continuous, start with a guess x0, which is reasonably close to a root. Then produce the sequence x0, x1, x2 by a iterative form. Now, the here problem is we have to guess a number x0, which is reasonably close to the root. Otherwise, it might be difficult for us to do this Newton's method. So, this is the formula there. xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f dash of xn. Okay. So, once you got x0, then we will find x, uh, x1 to be equal to x1 is equal to x0 minus f of x0 by f dash of x0. So, x2 is equal to x1 minus f of x1 by f dash of x1. It goes on like this. Now, now we will get again another sequence x0, x1, x2, etc. So if limit n tends to infinity x bar is equal to xn is equal to x bar, then f of x bar will be equal to 0. So in the case of limiting case, this will ultimately reach us to a solution. Only condition is that the x0 that you are going to take should be as close to the 
root as possible. Now we will have the another problem uh, some Riemann sums. To calculate an expression approximation to integral a to b f of x dx, let xi is equal to a plus i into b minus a divided by n and form the sum b minus a by n into f of x0 plus f of x1 plus x0 plus f of x n minus 1 or both are same b minus a by n into f of x1 plus f of x2 plus x0 plus f of x n. Now let us use this to find the evaluate the integral 0 to pi by 2 cos x dx. Let f of x equal to cos x. Now you divide the integral, uh, integral 0 to pi by 2 10 equally spaced points starting with x0 is equal to 0, x1 is equal to pi by 20, etc. x10 is equal to pi by 2. Here ci is equal to xi. Formula that we have studied is integral 0 to pi by 2 cos x dx is approximately equal to pi by 20 into 1 plus cos pi by 20 plus cos 2 pi by 20 plus etc. plus cos 9 pi by 20. That is equal to pi by 20 into 1 plus 0.98769 plus 0 0.95106 plus etc. plus 0.15643 which is approximately equal to pi by 20 into 6.85310 that is equal to 1.076148 but we know that actual sum of integral 0 to pi by 2 cos x dx is 1 so you see this in the Newton's kind of uh, reverse sum we are getting a value 1.07648 which is so far away from 1 so we use trapezoidal rule what do you mean by trapezoidal rule this is the formula there. Again, the, if you have to calculate an approximation to integral a to b f of x dx. Remember that sometimes we may, might not be able to find integral a to b f of x dx. In this case, these kind of formulas we will do. If we define xi is equal to a plus i into b minus a by n and form the sum like this. b minus a divided by 2n into f of x0 plus twice f of x1 plus etc. twice f of xn minus 1 plus f of xn. See, there should be a black bracket here. Uh, this is independent, this is not twice f of x n plus 1, f of x n. Uh, now, we again use the uh, previous example. Integral 0 to pi by 2 cos x dx is approximately equal to uh, pi by 2 divided by 20 plus 1 plus cos pi, uh, cos pi by 20 plus etc plus cos 9 pi by 20. The value is now pi by 40 plus 1 into 2 plus 0 0.98769 plus etc plus 1.5643 that is 0.9979. You see that it is again close to 1 but not that close. It is different. The distance is 0 0.0021 from 1. We use now the Simpson's rule. Again, a little bit more good one to, uh, to calculate an appro approximation for integral to be f of x dx. So what we try to do, what we will do here, we will divide the integral integral into even number of times. And this is the formula, b minus a by 3n, f of x0 plus 4 into f of x1 plus 2 into f of x2 plus etc. Finally, plus f of xn. Again, using the same example integral a to b or 0 to pi by 2 of uh, nx dx, you can see that it is the value is 1.0000034. See that it is actually less than or much more closer to the previous example. Now let us see what is sum of an infinite series. We define convergence of a series first. Now suppose that you have a sequence a1, a2, etc. of numbers. The number Sn is equal to sum of first n numbers of that sequence, that is a1 plus a2 plus etc. A n is called the nth partial sum of a n. Okay, now we can form another sequence from the given sequence a1, a2, a3, the new sequence is s1, s2, etc. s1 is a1, s2 is a1 plus a2, s3 is a1 plus a2 plus x3, a3, etc. Okay, now this sequence, if this sequence s1, s2, etc. approaches a limit s as n tends to infinity, when we say that the series a1 plus a2 plus etc. equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity converges and we write sigma i equal to 1 to infinity i equal to s, that is Sigma i equal to 1 to infinity a i is defined as limit n times to infinity i sum i equal to 1 to n a i is called the sum of the series. If the series sigma i equal to 1 to infinity a i does not converge, we say that it diverges. So we say that the series has no sum. We will discuss some properties of sequences. 
Now a1, a2, etc., an, etc., b1, b2, etc., are suppose that these two sequences are converges and c be any constant, then limit n tends to infinity an plus bn is equal to limit n tends to infinity an plus limit n tends to infinity bn. Limit n tends to infinity c into an is equal to c into limit n tends to infinity an. Limit n tends to infinity an into bn is limit n tends to infinity an into bn equal to limit n tends to infinity an into limit n tends to infinity bn. Limit n tends to infinity bn is not equal to 0 and bn not equal to 0 for all n, then limit n tends to infinity an by bn is equal to limit n tends to infinity an divided by limit n tends to infinity bn. If f is continuous at limit n tends to infinity an, then limit n tends to infinity f of an will be equal to f of limit n tends to infinity an. Limit of a constant function is that same, that is limit n tends to infinity c equal to c. Limit n tends to infinity 1 by n is equal to 0. Limit n tends to infinity f of x equal to l, then limit n tends to infinity f of n is equal to l. If mod r is less than 1, then limit n tends to infinity r raised to n is equal to 0. If mod r greater than 1, r is equal to minus 1. Uh, if and limit n tends to infinity r and r raised to n does not exist. Okay, so for mod r greater than 1 or r equal to minus 1, limit n tends to infinity r n will not exist. If mod r is less than 1 and a is any number, then a plus a r plus a etc. sigma e equal to sigma e equal to 0 to infinity a r raised to y converges and the sum is a by 1 minus r. We call this a geometric series. You know that. You might have studied in your previous classes. If mod r greater than or equal to 1 and a is not equal to 0, then the uh, series uh, diverges. If sigma a i and sigma e equal to 0 to infinity a i and sigma e equal to 0 to infinity b i convert, then sigma e equal to 0 to infinity a i b i converges and sigma e equal to 0 to infinity a i plus b i is equal to sigma e equal to 0 to infinity a i plus sigma e equal to 0 to infinity b i. This is what we call some rule. Sigma i equal to 0 to infinity a i converges and c is any real number then sigma i equal to 0 to infinity c a i converges and that is nothing but c into sigma i equal to 0 to infinity a i. Now let us see the ith term test. If sigma i equal to 0 to infinity a i converges, then limit i tends to infinity a i is equal to 0. If limit i tends to infinity a i is not equal to 0, then i equal to 0 to infinity a i converges. If limit i tends to infinity a i is equal to 0, then see we cannot say anything about the test. So we, we, don't, we cannot say whether it is converges or diverges. So some other test is or analysis is necessary to consider the uh, convergence of or divergence of this power series sigma a i equal to 0 to infinity a i. We now have a comparison test that i is equal to 0 to infinity sum a i and i is equal to 0 to infinity sum b i b series such that modulus of a i less than or equal to b i. If sigma i equal to 0 to infinity b i converges then sigma i equal to 0 to infinity b i a i will also converge. Ratio comparison test sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity a i and sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity b i is series with b i greater than 0 for all i then if mod a i less than b i for all i if limit i tends to infinity mod a i by b i is less than infinite and sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity b i is convergent then sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity a i is convergent if more a i is greater than or equal to b i for all i or if limit i tends to infinity a i by b i greater than 0 and if uh, then sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity b i is divergent then, divergent, then sigma i equal to 0 to infinity a i is divergent. A series i is equal to 0 to infinity b i is called alternating if the terms a i are alternately b i are alternately positive and negative that is if the absolute values are a more, uh, more b i r a i is greater than 0 a a 2 is less than 0 a 3 is greater than 0 a 4 is less than 0 etc or the other way that is mode a 1 greater than equal mode a 2 greater than equal mode a 3 greater than equal etc maybe tight tension infinity uh, 0 so alternating series and the world and we are some boy put out the limit tight tension infinity a i equal to series 0 alternating series test If i tends to infinity a i is a series such that a i alternating sign are decreasing in absolute value, then it tends to 0, then it converges. 
എന്താണ് ലിമിറ്റ് എൻട്രൻസ് ഓൾറെഡി മോഡ് എ ആയി സീറോയിലേക്ക് പോവുകയാണെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ സമ്മ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് കൺവെർജീവ് എന്നാണ് പറയുന്നത് ഇനി ഒരു സീരീസിന് അബ്സൊലൂട്ട്ലി കൺവെർജൻ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സീരീസ് സിഗ്മ ഐ ഈക്വൾ ടു വൺ ടു ഇൻഫിനിറ്റി എ ഐ ഈസ് ആൾ അബ്സൊലൂട്ട്ലി കൺവെർജൻ ഇഫ് സിഗ്മ ഐ ഈക്വൾ ടു ഐ ടെൻസ് ടു ഇൻഫിനിറ്റി എ ഐ ഈസ് ഐ ഐ സിഗ് സീരീസ് ഐ ടു ടെൻസ് ടു ഇൻഫിനിറ്റി അല്ല സിഗ്മ ഐ ഈക്വൾ ടു വൺ ടു ഇൻഫിനിറ്റി ഓക്കെ മോഡ് എ ഐ ഈസ് കൺവെർജൻ സോ എവരി അബ്സൊലൂട്ട്ലി കൺവെർജൻ സീരീസ് കൺവെർജൻ എ സീരീസ് മേ കൺവെർജ് വിത്തൌട്ട് ബീങ് അബ്സൊലൂട്ട്ലി കൺവെർജൻ പക്ഷെ സീരീസ് ഈസ് കാൾ കണ്ടീഷനിൽ കൺവെർജൻ to test the conversion of a series sigma i equal to 0 to infinity ai of positive decreasing team find a positive decreasing function f of x on closed one infinity such that f of i equal to ai and integral 1 to infinity f of x dx converges then sigma i equal to 0 to infinity ai will converge otherwise it will diverge that is integral 1 to infinity f of x dx diverges then sigma i equal to 0 to infinity ai will also diverge Now, to test the convergence of a series sigma i equal 0 to infinity ai of positive decreasing tends find a positive decreasing function f of x enclosed in interval 1 to infinity such that f of i equal to ai then it's as again said integral 1 to infinity f of x is converges then sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai will also converge if the integral diverges then integral 1 to sigma 1 to infinity ai will also diverge we now discuss what is meant by p series is if p is less than or equal to 1 then sigma i equal to 1 to infinity 1 by a raised to p diverges if p is greater than 1 then sigma i equal to 1 to infinity 1 by i raised to p converges now ratio test that sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai be a series suppose that limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai by a minus 1 exists if it is less than 1 then the series converges absolutely that is limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai by a minus 1 less than 1 then the series will converge absolutely otherwise it will diverge that means limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai by a minus 1 greater than 1 then the series will diverge again as in the previous problem limit i tends to infinity ai by a minus 1 equal to 1 we this test is inconclusive we cannot say whether the series converge or diverge now we have the root test if let sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai be a series suppose that limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai whole raised to 1 by i exists if limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai raised to 1 by i less than 1 then the series will converge every time it is less than 1 the limit less than 1 the corresponding series will converge not doubt about that if it is greater than 1 then the series will diverge and if it is equal to 1 our test will not if as the desired result that means the series will converge or diverge it will not give us now let us consider on the power series sigma what do you mean by power series is till now what we have studied is sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai now we will discuss sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai x raised to y so that's a power series assuming that limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai by ai minus 1 less than l equal to l so for there is a modulus there i put and assume that r is equal to 1 by l now it is quite clear that if r is equal to 0 then r equal to infinity if l is equal to 0 then r equal to infinity if l equal to infinity then r equal to 0 then if mod x is less than r then the power series converges absolutely so if mod x is less than r that means the sigma then we can easily say that sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai x raised to i is converge if it is greater than r the power series will diverge if it x is equal to plus or minus r power series may convert or diverge see that we call this r the radius of convergence of the power series now we will discuss the root test for the power series let sigma i equal to 1 to infinity ai x raised to i be a given power series assume that limit i tends to infinity modulus of ai whole raised to 1 by i equal to rho which is exists then the radius of convergence is r is equal to 1 by rho remember that now to differentiate now it is quite easy to again it will be more interesting we wanted to differentiate to integrate so if uh, the x that given is inside the uh, radius of convergence that is modulus of x minus x0 is less than r then d by dx of sigma 1 to infinity 0 to infinity ai x minus x0 whole raised to i is nothing but sigma 0 to infinity i ai 
into x minus 6, 0, 4 raised to i minus 1. Similarly, integral 0 to integral of some 0 to infinity ai x minus x 0 whole raised to i dx is equal to sigma 0 to infinity ai by 1 i plus 1 x minus x 0 whole raised to i plus 1 plus c where c is any arbitrary constant and this resulting series convert if modulus of x minus x 0 is less than r. Now similarly similar to what we have just, just studied earlier we have algebraic we can define algebraic operations on power series at f of x equal to i equal to 0 to infinity a i x raised to i b b as power series with radius of convergent r g of x is equal to sigma i equal to 0 to infinity b i x raised to i with radius of convergent s and assume that t is the smaller of r and s then f of x plus g of x is equal to sigma i equal to 0 to a infinity mod uh, a i plus b i x raised to i whenever x is less than t or mod x is less than t. Uh, if c into f of x is equal to c sigma 0 to infinity c a i x raised to i for mod x less than r. f of x into g of x is equal to sigma 0 to infinity sigma j equal to 0 to i a j b i minus j x raised to i for mod x less than t. So here it is a mod x there remember just like here. So and product also you please remember this formula. If b0 is not equal to 0 then f of x by g of x is equal to sigma 0 to infinity c i x raised to i for x near to 0 where c i is may be determined by long division. The determinant of radius of convergence of f by g is we need a little bit more analysis. Okay. Suppose that f is infinitely differentiable on some interval containing x0 then the series sigma i equal to 0 to infinity f, 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 f i to derivative of x0 divided by i factor x minus x0 raised to i is called the Taylor series of f at x0. If when x0 is equal to 0, then the series attains another similar form sigma i equal to 0 to infinity i to derivative of x on 0 i factorial divided by i factorial into x raised to i. This is called Maclaurin series of f. Convergence of Taylor series. We will discuss the convergence of Taylor series. If f of x is equal to sigma 0 to infinity a i on x minus x0 whole raised to i is a convergent power series on an open interval i centered at x0, then f is infinitely differentiable at and a i is equal to f i divided by i factorial so that f of x is equal to sigma 0 to infinity i to the derivative of f at x0 divided by i factorial into x minus x0 whole raised to y. We define r and x to be is equal to this one r n of x is equal to integral x0 to x x minus t whole raised to n divided by n factorial n to derivative of f upon t dt. If f is infinitely differentiable on an open interval containing i centered at x0 and if r and x tends to 0 as n tends to infinity for x in i where r and x is defined by the previous the above formula here then the Taylor series of f converges on i and equals to f, f equal to sigma i equal to 0 to infinity i the derivative of f at x0 divided by i factorial into x minus x0 whole raised to i. So to find the convergence of this series you first find the rn next and find what will happen as limit n tends to infinity rn and if rn tends to 0 then without any hesitation we can say this one f uh, what this one uh, sigma i equal to 0 to infinity ai x minus x0 whole raised to y in this fashion that is ai will be equal to f for f i the derivative of f at x0 divided by uh, i factorial okay Taylor series test <clears throat> to prove that a function f of x equal to its Taylor series. So let, me, so let uh, sigma i equal to 0 to infinity f i dash of x0 i factorial uh, x minus x0 all raised to y on i. This is the interval. Okay. Now for that it is enough if we show f is infinitely differentiable on i. The derivative of f grow no faster than a constant c times the power of a constant m that is for x in i more or less of f n dash of x is less than or equal to m raised to n four zero zero n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So what are we want to see? we want to show that f of x suppose that you have given a function f of x and f of x is equal to this Taylor series then we for that it is in a fifth issue if is infinitely differentiable on i this i is the interval which contains at x0 and the derivative of f should not grow arbitrarily. It, should, it, should, it has an upper bound that is modulus of f of x is less than or equal to m raised to n. 
Now we will give some important Taylor and Macaron series. The geometric series is the one of the important one. That is 1 by x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus etc. That is the radius of convergence is 1. Second is binomial. That is 1 plus x whole raised to alpha equal to 1 plus alpha x plus alpha into alpha minus 1 by 2 factor x square plus etc. Its radius of convergence is also equal to 1. Sine function, you know that. Its radius of convergence is infinity. Cos function, its radius of convergence is again infinity. Exponential function, e raised to x equal to 1 plus x by x plus x square by 2 factor plus x two by 2 factor plus etc. It is raised of convergence is again infinity. Logarithmic function is x minus 1 uh, log of x is equal to x minus 1 minus x minus 1 square by 2 plus x square minus 1 by 3 raised to 3 by 3 minus etc. Is radius of convergence is 1. If we replace x by 1 plus x, we will get log 1 plus x equal to x minus x square by 2 plus x two by 3 plus minus etc. Its radius of convergence is also equal to 1. Dear students, I just give you a briefly, briefly an idea of the second unit of the complementary kind of thing. So all of you hear this, maybe you can hear this two or three times, write a note, prepare a note for yourself and see there. If we have enough time, we will try to, I will upload another video, at least doing at least one problem for, from each section for your, uh, for you.